This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. You're watching Students Saving the Ocean. I wrote 50 Ways to Save the Ocean because what we do in our everyday life impacts the seas around us. And people would ask me, what can I do about climate change or the collapse of marine wildlife? You're already doing something. Everything we do every day impacts the oceans. Change has always been made by young people with commitment. The youth have, have the time, the energy, and, and that sense that it's your future to protect. And on our ocean planet, we're seeing so many dangerous things from industrial overfishing and, and plastic and chemical and nutrient pollution of, of our coastal seas. We're seeing climate change having tremendous impacts acidifying our oceans. And the frustration has been that we know what the solutions are. We haven't created the energy to implement them, but young people can do that. Young people have the time and commitment, and now the tools, the technology with, with new media to uh, spread the word, to educate their fellow young people and, and create a movement of what we call seaweed, marine grassroots, from the bottom up, because that's where change comes from. And young people have always been leaders in change. And what we need today is we need to turn the tide. We need to save our blue planet. California Coastal Cleanup Day is part of the International Coastal Cleanup, which is taking place in over 100 countries today at this same exact time all around the world. It's California's largest volunteer event. So we have about 800 cleanup sites now spread throughout 45 counties in the state. We actually have more cleanups inland off of the coast than we do on the coast itself because we know that's where most of the trash is coming from. Most of the trash comes from inland areas, comes from city streets and urban areas and urban creeks runs out to the beach and, and the coast through our storm drain system. So if we can catch it in those inland areas, you know, if we can stop it where it starts, then we don't have to clean up as much once it gets out to the coast. Every year, I'm amazed by the number of people that will turn out here to Ocean Beach, even though it's probably the coldest place in California right now. It's, uh, it's wonderful the turnout we get, and they've scoured this beach clean. If you go to pick up garbage on the beach, 95% of it is gonna be um, like food wrappers. The key to Coastal Cleanup Day is the fact that it is an educational event first and foremost. It's an opportunity for all of us to take three hours and clean up the beach, that's true. But during those three hours, you find all this material that you use every day. You being all of us, these single-use disposable items, these, these plastic bits and pieces that we know we don't have to be using so much of. You see all this stuff out on the beach and it teaches you the impact that you're having on the marine debris problem and on all the trash that's entering our oceans. My name is Natalie Levan and I am the restoration coordinator for Save the Bay. Recently Save the Bay released 10 Bay Area trash hotspots and so those are the dirtiest places in the Bay Area and we determine these areas because of Coastal Cleanup Day and all the data that's been collected. The great thing about these community days is it brings kids out and the kids are starting to realize that this is their legacy. This is what they have to be handed down to them and they're starting to get a sense of stewardship for their land. I'm picking up the trash and basically I'm writing down whatever he picks up. My tip to you is to always, just always recycle and um, yeah, just throw away your trash in the bins. Hi, my name is Tracy Zhu. I'm the Youth Development Coordinator for Literacy for Environmental Justice. Today is California Coastal Cleanup Day. It's the 25th anniversary, and we are here at Candlestick State Park in San Francisco. 
Literacy for Environmental Justice is an environmental education and youth empowerment organization located in Bayview Hunters Point and we are addressing the health and environmental concerns of this neighborhood and surrounding communities. This year we had over 800 volunteers come out to the east side of San Francisco to collect over 14,000 pounds of trash. Over at Double Rock you see couches, fern I mean just all kinds of furniture, like stuff that shouldn't be there, computers, chairs. That's why it's important to be out here because that furniture and all that computer waste is going out into the ocean and it's affecting everybody. Every year we find that the items that are most common are not necessarily bottles or plastic bags, but actually the most common items are cigarette butts and bottle caps. One of the most interesting things about finding bottle caps on beaches is that it's helped change legislation. They're working towards making bottles in which the bottle caps are connected to the bottles themselves so that the bottle caps don't flow down into the ocean. So that's one tangible policy change that has been affected by California Coastal Cleanup Day and all the data that we collect. Marine sanctuaries are parks in the ocean. They, they recognize unique areas and ecosystems in the sea, whether it's coral reefs or kelp forests in California. These are just uh, windows into the ocean that we can appreciate and we can also volunteer. My name is Crystal Sanders and we are next to San Francisco Bay and we're working on the San Francisco Bay Estuary Education Program. It's a project of the Bay Institute, working with the Farallons National Marine Sanctuary Association Visitor Center. We are working to uh, teach kids about the importance of San Francisco Bay Estuary as an ecosystem and give them a beginning background in marine biology and the importance of the oceans. Our program's out in our historic tide station, which is the classroom for the Gulf of the Farallons National Marine Sanctuary. And it's a perfect place to do a plankton lab because we're here over the water and we can use our plankton nets to collect our samples right here, right off our pier, and then take them inside to study them using our microscopes. We are able to use eyedroppers and pull out the plankton and stick them on the slide and we can look at them under the microscope and they look like aliens to me, but they're pretty amazing. We often overlook the importance of planktons, but in reality, planktons are the ones that we actually rely on to live. If you got rid of all the plankton, a lot of people would be suffocating right now. So plankton is of utmost importance, one, because it provides about 60% of our oxygen to the planet, more than all the plants on the land combined. And it's also the base of the food chain. We've just completed our plankton races, and what we had the students do was using things like pipe cleaners, toothpicks, modeling clay, design their own plankton based on what they've been learning in our class and see which plankton could sink the slowest. Plankton need to float but sink a little bit. And so plankton need to stay at the top because phytoplankton need to be near the sun to photosynthesize. And what happens with the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is a lot of the plastic that's wrapped up in the garbage patch can kind of mimic what it looks like to be a jellyfish. Plankton can incorporate itself around the plastic and then other animals eat the plastic. Bigger animals eat those animals and so we just have an accumulation of plastic going up the food chain. Most of the gut contents of many birds and fish now contain a lot of plastic versus regular food items such as fish and other sea animals. I think what's really exciting about this program is just to see uh, the students getting really engaged on hands-on activities. We feel it's really important to educate the youth about the importance of the oceans to our planet because they're the ones who can really make changes coming up into the future. The program here is great. You get to you learn a lot. You get to do a lot of cool activities and if you get the chance, you should apply. Hello, I'm Erin Blackwood. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for Romberg Tiburon Center, which is the Marine Lab for San Francisco State University. The mission is to train the next generation of scientists and to educate the public about the importance of San Francisco Bay and other marine habitats. Well, it's very important to uh, Romberg Tiburon Center to increase the stewardship and to really encourage stewardship in 
uh, our community and definitely getting the younger generation involved. Uh, every year we have our open house, Discovery Day, where we invite the community to come in. Lots of families come in with young children. So even at a very young age, they're getting introduced to the, the research that we do and why that research is important to conserving these habitats. We also work with high school students in an ocean science competition every year, trying to get them interested in going into careers in ocean sciences. This is Discovery Day, and it's an open house, and you can look at exhibits and touch the animals. Earlier there was a salmon release, and they released baby salmon into the ocean. That was really cool. All ages can get involved in uh, kind of trying their hand at research and seeing what it's like, uh, learning more about it. And we also invite um, guest exhibitors who are our partners in different environmental education projects and also in research projects that we do. So we're at Discovery Day today. We've had a great turnout of students and we're teaching them about mole crabs and sea stars and just different organisms that we study and trying to get them interested in marine life so they'll be more interested in protecting our environment. I think my favorite activity was doing the underwater remote control little submarines. At an exhibit, there's um, you can try to make your own phytoplankton, and you have to make them float. The slower they sink, the more alive they are. We have uh, touch tanks where people can actually get to touch and learn more about the animals that live in the bay. Uh, we have activities, art activities, because of course uh, it's really important to incorporate art and science um, into you know, getting people interested in conserving and learning about the environment that we live in. I think it's important to keep the ocean clean because we really need to use the ocean for water and we need to keep the ocean animals healthy. We could do that by not wasting so much plastic and not using plastic anymore. Um, you can use reusable water bottles instead of plastic water bottles. When I was in high school, I took a marine biology class and went tide pooling, and I decided this is it. This is what I want to do with my life. And I had people discourage me along the way, but I, I always you know, stuck with it, and um, it should be more important to a lot of people than it, than it is. I, I, I have arguments with people about space travel and you know um, how much investment goes into space travel. I think, yeah, you know, space travel is really interesting. There's a lot of things we can learn, but we're not putting enough resources and energy into this amazing environment that we don't know very much about that's on our own planet that we live on and that sustains us. So I think we definitely need to be focusing more on the oceans. Hello, my name is Aaron Pope. I'm the manager of sustainability programs here at the California Academy of Sciences. Here at the Steinhardt Aquarium, uh, we have a lot of fishes, a lot of different species of sea life, um, and we host a lot of school groups here. We have a lot of students come from all over Bay Area schools and California schools, and when students come to the aquarium, we really like to emphasize the fact that ocean conservation is really important, conserving the oceans is very important, and that there are challenges right now facing the oceans. There are a number of problems that are beginning to affect the health of the oceans and the fishes in the oceans and the people who eat those fishes and rely on those coastal ecosystems. So we really want to teach children that conserving the oceans and protecting them is very important, not only for the planet and for wildlife, but also for themselves and their own lifestyles. I think that aquariums are really important for a number of reasons for kids. First of all, they give kids a chance to come to a local place, some place in their city or their town or their state, where they can see a range of species and fishes that they would never get a chance to see in the wild. And so that can excite their imagination and also help them to understand that there's a connection between the ocean and themselves. I also think that aquariums are very important because we can deliver very, very strong messages about conservation and ways that kids can get involved in helping to protect the oceans. And so that's a lot of the work we've been doing here at the Academy is focused around teaching children that they can make a difference, that they are empowered and what they do is important and that they're the future. I think it's a really big part of our ecosystem and we have to keep the ocean clean. When you're at the ocean, you should try picking all the trash up that you see so it doesn't get washed into the ocean. Ask for a paper bag instead of a plastic bag because paper is a little bit more biodegradable. We have a number of ways that school groups and children are involved at the Academy. Uh, the first of which is we have a very strong intern program here at the Academy. We have local kids, San Francisco kids, who come here from high school and college, and they work really hard for a couple years here at the Academy, and we make sure we educate them about science and the importance of science, uh, the importance of the oceans, and we give them hands-on experience. They're able to be down on the public floor, working with the public, giving tutorials and giving examples, and teaching other kids just like them about the oceans. 
Many of our interns go on to really, really strong careers in science and sustainability, which we're really, really happy with. My name is Emily Tazzi. I'm the Education and Conservation Manager here at Aquarium of the Bay. Aquarium of the Bay gives you an underwater view of San Francisco Bay and its surrounding waters. Over 16,000 kids from the Bay Area will visit our aquarium each year to learn about this wonderful ecosystem. Now San Francisco Bay is actually an estuary. We have fresh water coming in from the San Joaquin and the Sacramento Rivers and we also have salt water coming in from the Pacific Ocean. So that makes the San Francisco Bay a very special place for the animals that live here. The oceans are important to all our Earth system, so it's important that we take care of them. Your simple everyday things such as recycling or changing your light bulbs to using fluorescence. Volunteering is another way that you can help the ocean. There are many programs out there involved in coastal cleanups, taking care of sick marine animals. And also here at the aquarium, you can volunteer, whether you're talking to visitors on the floor or working behind the scenes. There are many conservation issues and programs that Aquarium of the Bay is involved in. Uh, for example, we are a certified green business in the city of San Francisco. We are involved in the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program, and also we're trying to recruit restaurants around the Bay Area uh, that do serve sustainable seafood. Sustainable seafood means that you are taking fish from a sustainable population. We're not overfishing from the wild we're not destroying habitat, and also that these fish would be healthy for us. There's a lot of top predators out there, like swordfish and shark that contain mercury, which is very unhealthy for us. Sustainable seafood is, is about eating fish that are healthy and abundant. We don't want to take fish out of the ocean faster than they can reproduce. My name is Kenny Belov, and uh, we're at Fish Restaurant in Sausalito, California. Uh, also at the FisherCutBait.org Education Center. Fish opened five years ago. It's uh, been wholeheartedly dedicated to serving sustainable seafood with the strictest standards and our local organic produce and uh, biodynamic and organic wines. Sustainable seafood to us here at Fish is seafood that can reproduce faster than we're pulling it out of the oceans. Uh, when the fishermen go out and catch fish, they're catching it in such a way that they leave some for the next day, that we don't deplete the resource, we don't harm the habitat, we don't harm the forage fish that the other fish depend on for future generations. As far as sourcing sustainable seafood, what you want to do is uh, ask your fishmonger wherever you shop uh, if the seafood that you're buying is sustainable. And if they happen to tell you that it is, well ask them why. Ask them how it's caught. Uh, if it's line caught, is it pelagic long line? Is it rod and reel caught? If it's uh, flat fish, is it coming from a bottom dragger that is destroying the habitat and taking unwanted bycatch? Demand answers. Don't just take that it's sustainable as the answer. Our farmers are the same way. Organic farmers are directly in association with our, our watersheds. People who are farming organically do not take pesticides and herbicides and have the runoff that goes into our watersheds, ultimately depleting our salmon seasons. The fishermen that we support, we support them directly. We are supporting a fleet of boats that needs to make a living, and we're paying them well, and we're seeing them survive in a time where it's really hard for all of us to survive. The situation we're in right now with the local sustainable fisheries is there's very few of us left, and the permitting and requirements that we are obligated to follow are getting so strict. Right now, I mean, we have permits that we can't even use. We have quotas that we're allowed to have to actually go catch rockfish, but we can't access them because of certain regulations that are applied by the federal government. They don't emphasize between a hook and line guy and a drag boat. They basically make the rules for the drag boats, and the hook and line guys have to abide by those rules, and we're different. Hook and line is probably one of the only sustainable methods of fishing. The importance of sustainability can start with our children. Myself being a parent, I know the influence that my kids have on me. So that's why we created the FOCB Education Center to educate the public and the kids that come through Fish Restaurant about what we can all do to learn about the oceans, the state of the oceans. Some of the things I learned in school were that when mercury gets into the ocean, the fish eat it. And then when we start eating the fish, then we get the mercury into our bodies, which is really unhealthy. If we were to put 
food production into our curriculum, into our schools, and educate our children on watersheds, gray water systems, food production, organic produce, what does grass-fed beef mean? What is sustainable seafood? What are sustainable fishing practices? What are unsustainable fishing practices? When your child gets home from school and looks at you and goes, hey, mom, dad, I learned about this. Why don't we get that? Or, hey, why are you buying that? I know how that's caught, or I know how that's grown. That can make a world of difference for our futures. Our kids are our future. Why I do this every day is for my children. Things you could do to help the bay would be conserve water and use water wisely. My tip to you is don't litter. My tip to you to keep the ocean clean is composting. Maybe you can take your bicycle to work or something. Some of the things we could do to help is that we should eat more wild salmon and eat less farm salmon. Don't pollute the water. Just keep everything clean. Definitely using less plastic in our lives because I'm sure a lot of people have heard about the giant Pacific garbage patch out there in the ocean and we're all a part of that. We've all contributed to that so we can be a part of reducing that. Stop using single-use disposable items. It is the major thing that we have to pick up every year and even if you think you're not littering it, that stuff gets lost along the way and we need people to rethink the choices they make. Continue to shop local, buy local, go to your local farmer's market. There's not too many kids these days waking up saying, I want to be a farmer, I want to be a fisherman. It's a, it's a lost art. There are many people still out there doing it the right way, doing it the way that it was done 100 years ago. Try to seek those people out, find them, and you've made a relationship for life. Get out there and make a connection with the ocean. You know, Go to the beach, uh, learn to scuba dive, um, go to an aquarium even, volunteer volunteer to help the ocean. The ocean is the crucible of life. It's the driver of, of weather and climate. And we get so much from the ocean in terms of recreation, transportation, trade, energy, protein, and just a sense of awe and wonder of being part of something larger than ourselves that only makes sense that we give something back. You're watching students saying in the ocean. Russo's Harbor, home of fish restaurant. Uh, we, we do have sustainable fish sticks, uh, homemade sustainable fish sticks.